I think that Joseph Banks is a very important figure in the history of science and the history of this country. Um, and uh, more should be known about him. It's my great pleasure to introduce Sir David Attenborough. Thank you very much. The exhibition you're going to see is about a truly unique expedition in the history of mankind. And he was the great panjandrum of science. Uh, he was elected to the Royal Society at the age of uh, 27 or something of that sort. Um, and he, he was remained uh, um, president of the Royal Society, the most distinguished figure in, in British science, for 40 odd years. Why is it that Banks isn't as well known as, let us say, Darwin, or indeed Cook? I think the reason is that Banks, although he was a great scientist, his huge distinction was promoting science for the benefit of mankind. Banks was a hugely wealthy landowner in Lincolnshire, uh, but with properties that went right down to, to Sussex and so on. Um, and um, he became um, besotted by plants when he was 14. Um, and he determined that he would use his money um, to promote the study of plants. And when he uh, got the opportunity of going on this amazing expedition to the Pacific, arranged by the Royal Society and the Navy in order uh, to see the transit of Venus in Tahiti, uh, he went there to become uh, a, a botanical collector and a, a biological collector, a, a natural scientist, uh, which he did for, for, the, for the whole of that voyage. You go back to Columbus. There are accounts, rather vague accounts, of what happened. No objects, no drawings. If you look at later expeditions like Magellan's, nothing was brought back from that. If you looked at the illustrations, you would find that they were drawn by European artists who weren't on the expedition, but simply drew them from verbal accounts by the seamen concerned. But this expedition, under Cook, is something quite, quite different. And why? Because of a Lincolnshire man, Sir Joseph Banks. He was hugely wealthy. And when Joseph Banks decided to do something, he, he did it in style. He had, for example, four servants, and four professional men, a couple of whom were very good artists, whose job it was to both collect, help collect the objects, the uh, not only uh, natural objects like plants and animal specimens, but also um, uh, human-made objects, what were called in those days natural uh, curiosities. And so that was possible because Joseph Banks engaged them. The pictures you will see were done, for the most part, on the spot. Imagine those bits of paper out there. Imagine the young man, Alexander Buchan or Sidney Parkinson, the two best artists, looking at that scene with that particular piece of paper, with that particular pencil. You're seeing history there in a very big way. He brought back, I mean, I think from Botany Bay alone, 
which of course was named because he did a lot of botanizing in Australia, he brought back 400 species of plants that had, were un hitherto unknown. How did they fell the trees? What did they eat? How did they fish? What did they wear? All these things he methodically collected. Objects which you might think at that time were so ordinary, who wouldn't bother to collect a fish hook? But you look at the fish hook and you find that it was made by a man who had no knowledge of Europe and no knowledge of any other technology. And it was, but it was Banks who, because of his methodical scientific mind, insisted on putting together that collection. He was extremely active. He didn't sit back and just become a, a nominal person. He organized, for example, uh, the transport of breadfruit uh, from Polynesia to the West Indies, which initially uh, came to an abrupt halt with the mutiny on the bounty. Um, he also um, arranged for merino sheep to be imported to Britain uh, from Spain, and from there they went to Australia. Um, he um, was an active uh, a botanist, and he was responsible for bringing rigorous science into Kew Gardens and make it a fully scientific institution, uh, the leading botanical institution in the world, and it could still have claims to, to that title. I can actually add a bit. Uh, I'm very interested in birds of paradise. And I discovered, while I was doing a bit of research, that Joseph Banks brought back the skin of an unknown bird of paradise. And that's odd, because although when Cook and the, and the Endeavour sailed north up the Barrier Reef and then turned west to go through the Torres Straits with the island of New Guinea, which was the home of birds of paradise to the north, they couldn't land. The sea was too shallow and muddy, the coast was low. Well, they tried to land, they waded ashore, and some aggressive Papuans appeared, and Cook, a humane man who didn't wish to have, have quarrels with anybody, decided the best thing was to retire, which they did. And yet, Banks had a rare bird of paradise, a new species, and what's more, as we know now, a highland species. And they um, sailed west from that encounter with New Guinea, and eventually along a path which had been a trail, because Bird of Paradise plumes were used as money in the Far East, the trail of the trade of Birds of Paradise. And they got to a little island called Savu. And in Savu they had a rather hostile reception, because Savu was in the south part of the, south, of the Spice Islands. And there was a German there, who was a, an agent of the Dust East India Company, who put the chief of Savu's mind in aggressive form, hostile. They had to make peace. Banks and Cook went ashore. Now Banks not only had uh, four servants and four professional men, he also took with him two dogs, his pet dogs. He adored dogs. And when he got there, the chief of Savu had a bird of paradise skin unlike any that Banks had ever seen before. Would he part with it? In the end, he said to the chief of Savu, what would you like? And the chief said, your dog. <laughs> <coughs> and Banks, who was a great scientist, realized that even his pet dog would have to be sacrificed in the name of science. <laughs> And that skin, I regret to say, is now lost. But that bird, Astrapia splendidissima, the gorgeted bird of paradise, was brought back by Banks.
Banks was responsible for an awful lot of botanical research. In, in the 18th century, um, he was the leading scientist in, in the country. He was a great man. He was also a Lincolnshire man, and you have done him proud. Thank you very much. Thank you.